Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen. This video is a treat for those of you who I know are staying up late this Sunday night to do your homework last minute. Um, and honestly, if you watch the other videos, then you'll find this video at the end as a little treat as I help you through the homework. This is actually due tomorrow. Um, I know that I said I wouldn't post this video until tomorrow night, but I'm going to post it tonight in hopes that you guys are watching the videos and completing your work. It's supposed to help you. Okay. Now, according to this problem, it's a student that whose normal weight is 500 newtons stands on the scale in the elevator and records the scale reading as a function of time. The data shown below in the graph below, the data are shown in the graph above. At time equals zero, the elevator is at displacement equals zero with a velocity equals zero. So you can say like right here, it's at time zero, I mean x equals zero, so the elevator hasn't moved and the velocity is zero. So velocity is zero, the place, the position is zero, time is zero. That's like the triple point right there. So the first five seconds, since his weight is not changing, you can assume that, well, the elevator is not moving until the fifth second when we see some fluctuations in the scale reading. So this guy's like standing on a scale in the elevator. And this is really cool. If you do have a scale and an elevator, you can actually do this and see this happening um, at home. It's actually maybe something we can do during the week. Uh, so draw and label all forces at the student at t equals 8 seconds. Um, 8 seconds is about right here. 8 seconds. But before that, I'm going to break some things down that we definitely need to do in advance of the problem. They gave us a lot of information even before the start of it. So you're looking at this and you're like, but I don't have the mass of the kid. And everything deals with acceleration. And I know from what we're currently learning, everyone's panicking like, but I need acceleration to calculate forces and calculate mass. And so here, because we're using this equation, my F net equals my mass times my acceleration. In this case, it's going to be up and down in the Y axis. And so, I actually do know his mass because if his weight equals 500 newtons, And if I know that the force of mg is equal to weight, I mean gravity, the force of gravity is equal to weight, then I can set these two things equal to each other. And so my weight equals mass times gravity, my weight being 500 newtons. My mass is unknown, my gravity being 9.8 meters per second per second and actually to make sure I mean weight is negative so it's a negative 500 my acceleration due to gravity is a negative 9.8 if I divide both sides by 9.8 I can figure out what the mass of this fellow is and I've already done it here on the calculator 500 divided by 9.8 is 51 point decimal 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 so I'm just going to round that to 51 kilograms and that's going to come in handy a lot maybe but, I mean, that's just in case you're confused at that point. And so at 8 seconds, we can see that um, the scale reads 700. Now, how scales work is scales actually are showing you the normal force. They're showing you the force, like, of how the scale is exerting on you as reactive to the weight you're placing on it. I know it's kind of weird. Because, for example, the force of gravity is negative 500, so if the scale is absolutely still, it's going to show you the normal force that the scale is actually exerting back, according to Newton's third law, back up, my fingers back up towards you, which would be positive 500. But at 8 seconds, we got to wonder, that's not entirely true. Because, like, it's not like the elevator is moving and you increase in mass. No, you did not get fatter just because you're going up in the elevator. So the force of gravity, mg, still equals that negative 500 newtons. What's interesting in this case is that the opposing force according to the graph readout at 8 seconds is 700. Meaning the normal force of the scale, or the force of the scale is reading 700 newtons, a positive 700. What? How is that so? It's because you and the elevator are actually experiencing a force. You are being accelerated upwards. 
Now, if the normal force was 500 and your force of gravity was negative 500, positive 500 and negative 500 would cancel each other out, meaning your net force would be zero, meaning you have no acceleration. If you have no acceleration, then you have no change in velocity. If you have no change in velocity, the velocity you start out is zero and it's gonna stay at zero forever. Since your velocity is zero forever, you're not changing in position. And so if you're not changing position, why are you standing in an elevator? And so, I mean, you can rewind that back and listen to that again. That's the kind of thinking you want to have here. You need to have an upwards acceleration in an elevator is going to exert an upwards force on you. And that upward force needs to be more than the force that you are exerting downwards due to gravity. Otherwise, nothing's going to move. And so elevators work in that fashion that they're going to exert that upwards force. And so if we think about that, then we can actually get the acceleration at the elevator at that time point. And I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to do it for all of them, but I'm just going to do it for the first part. So then that you need to show the work and continue so you can see like, oh, I understand what's being said. And now I can kind of apply that thinking very similarly to complete the rest of the problems. And so here, my net force is going to equal my positive 700 newtons minus my 500 newtons my positive x my positive vertical forces and my negative vertical forces and so this is math is so easy even a second grader could do it what's 700 minus 500 There you go, people. So that leftover net force upwards is a positive 200 newtons. Hmm. Well, looks like that mass I found out earlier is going to come into play. Why? Because now with the actual net force being 200, the mass being 51, I can use these two to solve for acceleration. My acceleration is going to equal my net force divided by my mass in this particular case at 8 seconds. 200 divided by 51 kg is going to equal 200 divided by 51. That's going to be me um, about 3. Point, oh, sorry, I'm going to show you the calculator. Ooh, sorry. 200 divided by 51 is going to be me 3.9. Um, 3.9 meters per second per second okay we feel good about that okay so I'm gonna place that here because that was the zero that was the five to ten seconds if I'm not mistaken so this was what was that 3.9 meters per second per second and of course, in the first five seconds, if it's absolutely at rest and the elevator is not moving and this is just the, the scale showing your own weight, positive 500, negative 500, then at this case, <clears throat> oh, that hurt. This case, I mean, I have 500, negative 500. This case, I have 700, negative 500. In every case, you're going to have negative 500 because that's the mass, that's the weight of this dude on this scale. But you can see, in different cases, the scale is going to read different things. There's actually 300 here. And so you can really get a sense of where the elevator is moving. The elevator is moving up or down, depending on whether is the elevator pushing up on you, trying to increase, or is it, or is it even pulling away from you? And, in, and like even making you feel weightless, pulling away like you're getting lighter almost. And so here, if this is positive 500, negative 500, those two cancel out to net force of zero. If the net force is zero, then you have no acceleration. So in this case, of course, it's zero meters per second per second. Of course, I can graph this. Here's zero. Then, of course, I have 3.9, which will be about right here. And I leave it to you to find the other, the other accelerations and finish out the graph. Now, boom, 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 boom. What is happening here? Determine the velocity of the elevator at the end of at the end at the end of each five-second interval. Well, if your acceleration was zero entirely, 
then it's still going to be zero at the end of the first five seconds because you haven't exerted a force at all on it. So does that make sense? It's going to be zero meters per second. But now, you know where, where it is at five seconds, what is it going to be at the end of those ten seconds? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know this. Don't doubt yourself. Look at the acceleration. You actually calculate the acceleration value here. During this time period, 5 to 10 seconds, the acceleration is 3.9 meters per second per second. That's your acceleration. And so if I use the equation that we all know, V equals V initial plus A times T, and of course, if five seconds are passing, and my initial velocity is zero, and my acceleration in this case is, what was that? 3.9 meters per second per second, and I always have five seconds passing. If I do 3.9 times five, we'll get 19.6. And because that's a constant acceleration, you need to have to make sure you have a nice, nice straight line showing that constant slope, um, representing the constant, the slope of a velocity time graph is acceleration. That slope should equal 3.9 meters per second. So let me draw this out. 19, here's 20, 19.6. I'm going to estimate right here. That would be my final velocity, v. v equals 19.6 meters per second. And this is just for the interval 5 to 10 seconds. Once again, I'm not doing all the homework for you, ladies and gentlemen. That would be unfair to your learning. There. And now, what are the other accelerations that you need to calculate? How do you apply that in this case to then find the final velocity in each case and then finish off the graph? Now, whoa, this is the toughest one. Determine the displacement x of the available of, oh, excuse me, tongue tied. Determine the displacement x of the elevator above the starting point at the end of each five second interval. Well, wow. let's think about it. Well, the elevator is starting at zero times zero. The, had no velocity, right? It had no velocity? No, it didn't have any velocity at all. For those first five seconds, there was no force. There was no acceleration. The elevator wasn't moving. There was no velocity change. The velocity is zero. So guess what? For displacement, these first five seconds, you're just going to draw another, again, another straight line. It kind of matches up everything else. Isn't that nice and neat? But then, but then, but then, dun, 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 dun. What's going to happen? Well, if at the end of this five second interval, I'm still at zero meters, where am I going to be at the end of 10? Have no fear, people. This is, once again, just applying the equations that we've been applying. And look, this is, this is straight on your way to a 5 on the AP exam. Please watch these videos. Watch them again and again. We're applying the same equation we apply in class. You're, you're solving for displacement. That's the variable D. You have these equations. D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. In this case, you need to use the initial velocity at the start. So if this, is, if this was a time for 5 to 10 seconds, I'm starting at 5 seconds. I'm not starting at 0. I'm starting at 5 seconds. I'm starting here. What's my velocity here? My velocity here is 0. So this term drops out. Then I'm going to get d equals 1 half a t squared. Okay, so what is my acceleration during this time period from 5 to 10? My acceleration, well, we, we're, we're pulling from the other information. My acceleration and during that 5 to 10 interval was 3.9. I'm using my calculations from before. So I'm going to get 1 half times 3.9 meters per second per second. And then here's where we make most mistakes. You think, what am I times squared? It's going to be 10? No! No, it can't be 10. Guess why? Because your time interval is only having the acceleration from 5 to 10. So this time interval here is only 5 seconds. From here to here is 5 seconds. You're literally, it's chunking up into 5 second intervals. So I'm doing 5 squared, 5 seconds squared. Of course, the meters per second squared is going to cancel out the second squared here. Let's see what we got. I'm going to do 
3.5 times 3.9 times 5 squared, 48.75. We'll round that to 49. Squiggly lines, 49 meters. About 49 meters. And right there at 10 seconds, I'm going to be at 49 meters. It just makes it easier since there are, there are 10, 10 intervals. I'm not going to draw a straight line. I can't draw a straight line. I cannot draw a straight line. So what I really want to see is to find the points. Now, be, beware. When you use this, again, for the 10 to 15 second interval, okay, and I'm going to see your points plotted. You just need two more points here, the one for where you're at at 15 and where you're at at 20. When you, you need to use your initial velocity, your initial velocity is not going to be zero. Your initial velocity is going to be what your velocity is at 10 seconds. Well, guess what it is at 10 seconds? Your velocity at 10 seconds is what you calculated from C, 19.6. So in this case, your initial velocity at the starting 10 seconds, VI, at 10 seconds, and I use the ampersand, VI at 10 seconds, the initial velocity at 10 seconds, because that's your new frame of reference, is going to be 19.6 meters per second. So that's what you need to plug into this equation, VIT plus one half AT squared. And notice that you, you because you're actually now in motion on the later ones, you're actually going to need to adjust that. And so your VI is going to be changing. But then if you did your calculations correct here, you should know what your VI is at 15, what the VI is at 20. and so forth okay I mean I've done half of it for you if you literally show up with the same portions that I've done and nothing else and I can't really give you much credit for trying the homework on your own come on ladies and gentlemen show some critical thinking you are able to do that if you have any questions put on comments I'll try to I'm still trying to figure out how to connect um, comments being posted on the YouTube page to my cell phone so I can get those alerts immediately don't stay up too late ladies and gentlemen we have AP Physics second period. Be there, please. Thank you. Have a good night.